Now we're going to talk about equations of vertical and horizontal lines. Remember that in a vertical line, all the points have the same x value. Here's a vertical line. Notice that its slope is undefined. And also notice that it's not a function. And also notice that we don't really need to calculate anything. Every x value is the same. So all we need for this line's equation is x equals whatever that x value is. In this case, it would be x equals 3. And now let's talk about a horizontal line. In a horizontal line, all the points have the same y value. So the equation of a horizontal line is going to be y equals whatever that y value is. In this case, y equals negative 2. And remember, this is a function, and it's just a line whose slope is 0. So you have no x term because the coefficient of your x term in this case would be 0. Okay, let's give you a chance to write the equation of a couple of lines here. So the first one says write the equation of a vertical line that goes through 2 comma 7. I think it's helpful always to have a little sketch to look at. And so I'm going to draw myself a coordinate system and plot the point 2 comma 7 and draw a vertical line through it. And that just helps me see that what all these points have in common is they all have the same x value. And so now I know that I can write the equation of this line as x equals 2. And let's write the equation of a horizontal line that goes through negative 7 comma 4. Okay, so again, I want a sketch. Negative 7 comma 4 would be about here. And a horizontal line would go this way. And when I look at that horizontal line, I can see that all of these points have the same y value. So now I know that I can write y equals 4. The last thing we need to do in this section is talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. Our goal is to be able to write the equation of a line that's parallel to another line or perpendicular to another line. So we need to know something about how the slopes of parallel lines and the slopes of perpendicular lines relate. Two non-vertical lines are parallel if they have the same slope. You can see here I have two parallel lines. Parallel means they're never going to cross. So two lines can only be parallel if they have the same slope. Otherwise, if they didn't have the same slope, at some point they would have to cross. So parallel lines have the same slope. Two non-vertical lines are perpendicular if they have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. So remember that slope is rise over run. So this line, this blue one, has a slope of C over D. If we rotate that to the perpendicular position, what used to be the rise becomes the run, and it's backwards. And what used to be the run becomes the rise. So this blue line has a slope of C over D, but this red line has a slope of negative D over C. So you see that they are opposites in sign. One's positive and one's negative, but they also are reciprocals. So two perpendicular lines will have slopes that are opposite reciprocals. Now in example 6, we're going to write the equation in both slope-intercept form and standard form of a line that passes through the point 3, 5. And we want our new line to be parallel to 2x plus 5y equals 4. Now in order to write the equation of a line, you know that we need to know a point on the line, which is 3, 5, and we also need to know that line's slope. Well, they did not give us the slope, but they did ask us to make the line parallel to this line, and we know that parallel lines have the same slope. So if we could find this line's slope, we would know the slope of our new line. All we need to do is solve this equation for y, so let's move the 2x to the right side of the equation, and let's divide by 5. Now we can see that y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 4 fifths. So the slope of this line is negative 2 fifths. Therefore, the slope of our new line will also need to be negative 2 fifths. And remember that we want our new line to go through the point 3 comma 5. So now we'll use the point slope formula to generate the equation of this line. 
So we'll say y minus the y that we know equals m times x minus the x that we know, which is 3. And first, let's get this equation in slope-intercept form. So we will distribute the negative 2 fifths. Now, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, so this term ends up as positive 6 fifths. Now we will add 5 to both sides. Now remember, you can't just add 6 plus 5 because we need a common denominator. So 5 becomes 25 over 5. And now 6 fifths plus 25 fifths is 31 fifths. So we have y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 31 fifths. The slope here is negative 2 fifths as it should be, and the y-intercept is 31 fifths, which is the same as 6 and 1 fifth if we needed to graph it. Now we want to put this equation in standard form, so we'll need to eliminate these denominators. Let's multiply both sides of that equation by 5, and now we'll have 5y equals, on the right side, these 5's will cancel and we'll have negative 2x, and these 5's will cancel and we'll have plus 31. So 5y equals negative 2x plus 31. Now to get to standard form, all we have to do is move the x term to the left side so it can be positive. Now we notice that we have a positive x term. 2 and 5 and 31 are mutually prime. That is, there's nothing that goes into all three, and they're all integers. So this is standard form. Now in part B of example 6, we want to write the equation in slope-intercept form and standard form of the line that passes through 3 comma 5, and this time is perpendicular to 2x plus 5y equals 4. So we know that in order for a line to be perpendicular to another line, their slopes have to be opposite reciprocals. Now you'll remember in part A we just found the slope of this line and we found out that that line's slope was negative 2 fifths. So the slope of our new perpendicular line will need to be positive 5 over 2. We change the sign and we flip the number over to get the opposite reciprocal. Now, our new line needs to also still go through the point 3 comma 5, and so we will use the point slope formula with this point and our new slope We'll say y minus the y that we know equals our new slope times x minus the x that we know. Since they asked us to get the equation of the line in slope-intercept form and standard form, let's go ahead and get the slope-intercept form first because we're so close. Let's distribute the 5 halves. 5 halves times x will be 5 halves x, and 5 halves times negative 3 will be negative 15 halves. Okay, now, if we just add 5 to both sides, uh, we'll have to get a common denominator here. 5 is 10 halves. Just multiply top and bottom by 2. And so we'll have 5 halves x minus 15 halves plus 10 halves. Negative 15 plus 10 is negative 5. So we have 5 halves x minus 5 halves. Now that is our slope-intercept form. And now let's take this form and transform it into standard form. So we'll need to eliminate these denominators. We will multiply everything by 2. And that's going to let these 2's cancel and these 2's cancel. We'll have 2y equals 5x minus 5. And now all we need to do is get the x and the y on the same side. And remember, we need the x to be positive. So what I've decided to do, since x is already positive, I've decided to bring the 2y term over to the right, and that's going to give us 0 on the left equals 5x minus 2y minus 5. And now, of course, I need to bring the 5 over to the left to make it positive. But usually we write the x and the y on the left and the constant on the right. So remember, I'm bringing this negative 5 to the other side and it will be positive. But now when I write it, I'm writing 5x minus 2y equals positive 5. And that is our standard form. 
Here are a couple of practice ones from the homework, so feel free to pause the video and try these next two on your own. I'm just going to walk through both of them with you. Here we go. So it says write the equation in both slope intercept and standard form of a line that passes through negative 1 comma 4 parallel to x plus 3y equals 5. So we'll need our new line to have the same slope as x plus 3y equals 5. Let's solve this equation for y so we can see what that slope is. So I'm going to move the x term to the right side. It becomes negative, and I'm going to divide each term by 3. So the slope of this line was negative 1 third. Therefore, I need my new line to have a slope of negative 1 third. So now using this point, negative 1 comma 4, we're going to use our point slope formula to say y minus the y that we know equals m times x minus the x that we know. But minus negative 1 will be written as plus 1. Okay, now we're very close to slope intercept form here, so let's go ahead and distribute the negative 1 third. And now let's add 4 to both sides. And you know when you add a fraction to a whole number, you need a common denominator. So 4 becomes 12 thirds. All you need to do is multiply this 4 by 3 over 3 to see that. And now negative 1 third plus 12 thirds gives us 11 thirds. So our final slope intercept form of this line is y equals negative 1 third x plus 11 thirds. Now let's go ahead and transform it into standard form. So we'll need to eliminate these denominators. I'll multiply everything on both sides by 3. And now we're going to have 3y. These 3's will cancel and these 3's will cancel. And on the right side that will give us negative 1x plus 11. Now this is almost standard form. All I need to do is bring this negative x to the left side so it can be positive and so that the x and the y can be together on the same side, we end up with x plus 3y equals 11. And that is the standard form of this line. Now let's go ahead and look at 47. You might want to pause and try it on your own first if you haven't already. So this time we have a different line. We have 3x plus 5y equals 1. So if we want to be perpendicular to this line, we'll need to use the opposite reciprocal slope. Let's solve that line for y so that we can see what its slope is. And when I solve for y, I see that the line they gave us has a slope of negative 3 fifths. That means the slope of my new line needs to be positive 5 thirds. Change the sign and flip the number over. Okay, now I'll be using the point slope formula with the point that they gave us and my new slope of 5 over 3. So y minus the y that we know equals m times x minus the x that we know. Let's go ahead and distribute the 5 thirds. And let's go ahead and add 6 to both sides. Now, when I add 6 to both sides, because I'm adding to something that has a denominator of 3, I will want to change the 6 to thirds. So multiply this 6 by 3 over 3, and we see that 6 is equivalent to 18 thirds. All right, now negative 5 thirds plus 18 thirds adds up to 13 thirds. And here is our slope-intercept form. And now we'll transform that into standard form. So what we're going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by 3. That will let these 3's cancel out, giving us integer coefficients all the way around. And we'll have 3y equals 5x plus 13. Now to get this to standard form, I'll want this y term over here with my x. And my x is already positive on the right, so I don't want to make it negative. So I'm going to leave it there. And I'm going to bring the 3y over to the right. And now, in order to get the constant on the left side, I'm going to bring 13 to the left side. That will make it negative. And now, just to make it look right, I'm going to put the x and the y on the left and put the constant on the right. So we'll have 5x minus 3y equals negative 13. And that is our standard form.